Somebody on Patreon asked me this question. It's a very good question, which is how do you control your emotions? Because I always say that the difference between men and every other creature on this earth, including women, including of course children, is that we men can control our emotions. We can control our emotions and use our reason, our logic, our acquired knowledge and experience to dictate our actions. This is the unique quality that we have, but of course it presupposes, you know, controlling those emotions. So how do you control your emotions? Well, first of all, you have to acknowledge that number one, you have emotions. And number two, the goal is not to repress emotions. No, 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 no. You never want to repress emotions. You want to acknowledge them and you have to think of them like steam. You want to release that steam in a way that's harmless, that does not interfere with your goals or make you look bad or, or do anything negative to your life. You want to let off that steam in a harmless way, but never denying its existence. There are a lot of fucking idiots who go around saying that, oh yes, I'm a big man, I'm John, I'm tough, I control my emotions, I squash them down, oh yeah, uh, uh, uh. Fucking idiots. They don't know what the fuck they're doing, okay? It is natural and normal to have strong emotions about what everything. Whatever that's going on in your life, whatever, you know, thing, it's natural. You should never deny the emotions, the appetites, the, the, the urges, the whatever you want to call them, you should not deny their existence or repress them. You should especially not deny them to yourself. You have to acknowledge the fact that within you, in your heart, there are strong emotions that sometimes come out in ways that are highly destructive. Take frustration, for instance. We all get frustrated about different things. What's frustration? It's that feeling of impotence whereby you are not getting the things that you want. Perhaps you're eventually getting them, but maybe not in the time that you want or the way that you want it, you know, whatever the fuck. But the point is, see, uh, uh, frustration, a lot of men, Sometimes they take out their frustrations on the people who, who are least culpable of their frustration and uh, with whom they should never take out their frustrations. For instance, their children. Yeah, I mean, children are annoying. I know, I got a couple, you know, and I used to be a kid, so I know how annoying I could have been, I was when I was a kid, and I've got my little monsters now, and they are fucking annoying, yeah? The frustrations that I have in my day to day I make sure to always leave them at the door and never ever let off that steam of frustration onto the kids because it's uncalled for. But that happens all the time. I mean, it's, it's, it's practically a stereotype, it's a trope. I mean, so many novels have been written about the guy, the, the very successful executive or what have you, who'd get home and be a fucking terror to his family because you know he, he would just explode with the daily accumulated frustrations. That that is not how you control your emotions. Oh no. How do you control your emotions? For instance, frustration, right? You, you take it out on something inanimate and stupid. Yeah. Like for instance, I'm into playing squash, right? And squash can be a very frustrating game. And more than one time, I've sort of like banged my racket. Banged my racket in frustration because it's, the ball is not doing what I want it to do. Yeah, but it's not just the ball, of course. It's the other accumulated frustrations in my life that I am letting out on the squash court and my squash partners, well, they're in the same boat. Yeah, they're pissed off with shit in their lives, with their businesses, what have you, and they play and they try to get the ball to do what they want it to do and of course it doesn't, right? And they scream and holler and I don't take it personal because I know that they're not yelling at me and they're not even yelling at themselves. They're just letting off that steam. That's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And there are other emotions too. Uh, other emotions that a lot of guys are embarrassed to admit to. For instance, sadness. Yeah, a lot of times we are extremely sad about different things that have happened in our lives. And sometimes we don't know how to express these emotions, the sadness. And sometimes because of it, because we don't know how to express the sadness, we express it by way of rage. We express it by way of, you know, uh, hitting out, lashing out. And sometimes we lash out at people that we love and we don't mean to hurt, but we do. We do because we're upset, upset with ourselves, sad with whatever has happened, sad about perhaps, you know, missing a friend who's long gone, or sad about missed opportunities, or sad about whatever. I mean, in the life of a man, in your life, 
you're going to have a whole host of things that will bring you to tears. You'll have a whole host of things of failures and losses that will break your heart, break it into a thousand pieces. And that sadness, it needs expression. It needs expression. But see, it's so easy to, rather than express that sadness and cry over something dreadful or sad or hurtful, some loss that can never be repaired, rather than crying over that, you get angry, and you get angry, and you blow up, and you blow up at people who didn't deserve your blow up, and people you love, and you hurt them for no reason. Hmm? Doesn't that happen to you? Because it certainly happened to me. Sadness, you know, loss, all kinds of sad emotions. And I'll tell you the thing that has helped me the most in terms of handling my, my, you know, the sadness that I carry within me, the sadness of things that have happened. I found that what I have to do is I have to cry over stuff. And you know what I cry over? Yeah, <laughs> you wanna know? I cry over old movies. Yeah, old tragic movies. Yeah, old tragic movies or, or sometimes tragic novels that I've read. Yeah. And some of them are, are pretty schlocky, to tell you the truth, yeah? I mean, I'll tell you right now, one of the books that I cry about, you know, whenever I read it, and I have a copy, I'm ashamed to say, is this horrendous novel, Love Story. Oh yeah. Love Story is this awful novel written by Eric Siegel. It was made into a schmaltzy movie back in 69, I think, or something like that. It's about some guy and some girl, and they're in love, and everything is wonderful, and then she gets cancer and dies, the end, you know? It's a tearjerker. You know, I read this fucking piece of shit because it is a piece of shit as a novel, right? And I cry oceans over it. And I already know the story, of course. I've read it countless times before. But the thing is, see, the catharsis. I read this schmaltzy, stupid, tearjerker novel. And a lot of the sadness that has accumulated in my heart from other things, far more important things, the things that can never be fixed. Mm -hmm. I let it all out. I let it all out in a harmless way. Of course, I don't have anybody around me when I'm doing this. No, I do it privately, you know? The same way that I take a shit privately, yeah. But the thing is, see, that release, that, that relief, well, it's, it's exactly like taking a dump. You are taking an emotional dump. You are dumping out of your heart all the shit that has accumulated. Make it a habit. Make it a habit of finding something where you can express your sadness in a way that is, you know, it's not gonna harm you. It's not gonna do anything. Like in my case with this stupid schmaltzy book, right? Find a sport or some activity where you can release your frustrations and your anger and your impotence at the different things that aren't going well in your life that you can release them in a way that just, it's like a dump, like, dropping a load of shit in the toilet, flushing it away, and moving on with your life. That's what you have to do with emotions. Yeah, because you know, like shit, yeah? Shit is toxic, after all, yeah. I mean, shit can be very, very dangerous, yeah? You smear shit around the place, and all sorts of people are gonna get sick. N not you, of course, the other people, yeah? Th that's the nature of shit, and the same with the accumulated emotions that need release in your heart. Hmm? You have to bring them out. You have to pinch that loaf, flush it away, and move on. You have to find ways that work for you to drain out these emotional excesses. Because it's only by draining out these um, emotional excesses, this emotional baggage, draining it out, letting it out, but letting it out like steam, letting it out in a way that doesn't hurt you, right? It's only this way that you can control your emotions in moments when it's important. So you see, you have to find, release, you find that emotional toilet, <laughs> to extend the metaphor, you have to find ways that all of this extra emotional baggage is purged from your system, and so that when the moment comes, the important moments come, the moments when you have to be cool, when you have to be rational, when you have to be on point, sharp, you know, there. Well, then you'll be able to make the right decisions without being clouded with all of this uh, shitstorm of emotion in your heart. You see? That's how you control emotions. 
not by repressing your emotions, but by letting them out, leaving them behind, and moving forward.